poor dish. She get she getting the mood set off right, ain't she? <laughs> it's going down. Yes. Hold on a second. So just to let you know before we get started, I am okay. a little under the weather. So okay. hold on. If I okay, like put I it on mute. Feel better, Queen. Thank you. If I put it on mute, then I'm probably blowing my nose or doing something crazy. <laughs> like That's that. Fine. But I didn't want to miss I didn't want to miss this. I okay. was like, so what if I'm a little sick? We're going to get through this and we're going to do this. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Warrior Dawn. So, I guess, hold on. Get this going. Bring up my little notes. I'm excited for you. Yes. Long time coming. Yeah. Finally here. Yeah. I want to make sure everything was right. You put it in the universe and guess what? Boom. Bam. We here. We here. <laughs> like clockwork. in the building. Okay, so I guess we get started. So welcome nostalgia lovers to the daily throwback classic show i'm your host Vinnie rain that's my name bring them my throwback knowledge to the game and today we have a very very special guest i'm gonna let her introduce herself today <laughs> <laughs> well i'm your girl miss toy known for the popular, most classic hip hop song in hip hop history, you could do it with Ice Cube, and also featured on the Up and Smoke tour. The only female rocking out with all the fellas on the West Coast. You know how that go. Yes, yes. I was gonna definitely touch on that. So <laughs> before we get to that, I just kind of want to start from the beginning of your journey and your story. So before you was into the music and all of that. You're originally from Chicago. Yes. And then you Stomp moved down Shy Town. Shy Town. Yeah. And then you moved to California. How old was you? You were still like in high school? Yeah, high to a kneecap. You know what I'm saying? I was, no, I was uh, in elementary still, you know? Oh, okay. So I don't know. I thought you was school. in like still high school. So you was in elementary school. You moved to California. And yeah you had a lot of responsibility early on like you had younger siblings and you would help mm -hmm. take care of them when yep. uh your mom's working and all that so niece and everything early you know? yeah so i think that's why you got the big sis vibes yeah it's the big sis vibes so always taking care of the fam yeah so when did the writing start because from what i read before you was even into music and stuff you was like a speaker. Yeah. You well, were speaking, poetry. public speaking? I wrote poetry. That's how mm -hmm. I communicated with my mom after I got in trouble and I was trying to get back in her favor. I used my, you know, my words and I put poems together for birthdays and, you know, I, I did a lot of writing. And so my writing from, you know, turning in, in a small child, just writing poems, it turned into doing things at school. You know what I'm saying? So... I ended up writing for the paper at school, you know, the board meetings I always attended, I always got all the intel, and then I wrote for the paper. So writing oh, was like my first love, you know? Oh, okay. How old was you when you was writing for the paper and stuff? I was in, you know, I was a senior, you know, I was, I was making my way through and figuring out what I wanted to do. And a lot of my teachers, like two of them particularly, were like, you have an awesome niche in writing and they pushed me to do certain uh you know uh bios and articles and they just pushed me to read a lot and a lot more and i didn't understand that first but then they helped me get my first you know my scholarship to uh for burger king academy i went to you know um uh, school for a little bit, bit for journalism oh, wow. when i got out of high school so oh, okay. all of that was happening but i still was i was a dancer at that time i wasn't a rapper yet i was a hip-hop dancer Oh, okay. So you was like, <laughs> what was you doing? Was you like break dancing and stuff? Girl, I had doing? on the sequence. I had on the sequence, little bra thing, the sequence shorts. The oh, shoot. Boots. You know what I'm saying? The knee pads out there sliding on the floor, doing all of the look. <laughs> oh, you had the knee pads and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
I didn't even know that. Okay, so how did you how did you go from like dancing to actually like doing the music? Because you was like you was in a group before before militia. We gonna get to the militia, but That's before why we militia, you was, was in, in another group, group, right? I was in you a was, dance group. Yeah. Okay, so it was a dance group. It wasn't really a music group. It was a a, a rapper artist that I was uh, rapping at the time, but it was more about the dancers um, when it all boiled down to it, because one of the dancers was from Canada. She was a ballet dancer. You know what I'm saying? The other girl was a cheerleader. It's like we all had goals and different things. So when we got together, it kind of gave us that spark. And after every show, everybody in the club will come to me like I had the mic. So I needed the mic after that because I loved that everybody came to me just because I was dancing. You know what I mean? Oh. It was just the energy. Okay, so <laughs> that's what made you like itch to get behind the mic because of the attention you was to. getting with and the dancing. Exactly. So I tried it with that group and was like, I need to, you know, get the mic. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm you know, rapping. And then, you know, the lead rapper, she was like, no. So that's what... <laughs> Worth Miss Toy because you can't never tell me no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gonna say, oh, I'm gonna handle that now. Okay, she, I got was, you. she was a white rapper, so she can't tell me no. Like at this time, <laughs> I'm like, no, you're not telling me no. I can't rap. Like I'm going to take this mic. <laughs> oh wow. So, okay. So then, how did that transition go? When you was like, okay, I'm gonna get on the mic now. What did you do next? No, listen, I was writing and doing my thing. And I dated a guy, he actually drove a limo. So every day I was in a limousine, you know what I'm saying? At this time, you know, young 20, just doing my thing. And I wasn't a superstar or anything, but I already had this vibe, you know what I'm saying? You mean? had the so vibe. I had the vibe, I had everything already, you know, down. So. My boyfriend at the time was like, damn, man, I got, that's nice what you're doing. You know, I was rapping at home, you know, doing my little thing, had my little apartment. And then the next person that he saw that was in his limo was uh, Brooke Payne. And that's Ronnie DeVoe's DeVoe. uncle. Yeah, yeah. Ronnie yeah. DeVoe's so, manager. So, so, then, really so that's when it, so that's when it kind of started yeah. to open up. Because connections and then people believing that this is actually something I'm doing was very important. And so for me to see that people made connections like that and then in real time I went to, to a meeting with them did my rap and then I did a my first song with Ronnie DeVoe in the studio you know what I'm saying lifestyle of rough and sexy you can't turn me back from hip-hop now I'm already in the game you know oh <laughs> so your first song was with Ronnie DeVoe my very first studio recording <clears throat> was with Ronnie DeVoe and I actually really uh learned a lot right then and there from the producers from the writers that everybody that was there collectively the energy just flowed right to me and it was like you you are natural and i was like hey, yeah. hell they've been doing this longer than me you know what i'm saying 